Hello there, a uh, very good evening and welcome to Government in Transition. I'm your host, Eddie Lane, and I'm joined this evening by Joe Hamilton, a candidate of the People's Progressive Party, as well as Sonia Parag. She's also a candidate of the PPC and an attorney in law by profession. Joe, Sonia, good evening and welcome to the program. Hi, Eddie. Good evening, uh, Sonia. Good evening, viewers. Good evening. Good evening, Eddie. Good evening, Joe, and good evening to all the viewers. All right, so I want to dig straight into this, and I want to start tonight. Um, you know, and I guess both of you have been observing, as well as our viewers, would have been observing what has been happening um, in in recent days. And if you re if you recognize Joe Sonia, the desperation in the cabal has gotten worse. And I think I said this about last week. Now, as we get closer to the end, as we get closer to the CCJ's ruling, and as we get closer to GCOM making a declaration, you will find that the absurdity, the craziness, the desperation um, will increase in, in, in the cabal, and we've, we've seen it. But I want to start with uh, the foolish uh, attempt at propaganda today by the cabal, and... Um, what, is it, what was even more foolish is that it was shared by the, the mere utensil, Joe, ha um, Joe Harmon. I don't want to get mixed up with Joe Hamilton and Joe Harmon here, right? So I have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, that a team, inclusive, the inclusive of the General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, Dr. Jack Dio, uh, Jerry Govaya, uh, Ramesh Dupu, and I don't know who else, left on a flight from Ogo. By the way, our airspaces are closed, right? Yes. They left on a flight from Ogo to Trinidad um, to intimidate, uh, to, 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 to have discussions um, to try to convince the CCJ to rule in favor of the PPP. So the level of craziness, these people are, are mad, as simply put. The thing is, Eddie, you know, every day they give new powers to, to Barra Jack Deal. And so today they give powers to Jack Deal that he and associates are able to teleport to Trinidad and back to Guyana. So Jack Deal now has been, uh, he is now uh captain kirk in star wars because the fact that the gentlemen they are here i saw jerry was having breakfast with his with his wife uh and uh, it shows how crazy these people are secondly armon is the ceo of the covid uh, 19 task force and the fact that he can promote that Jack Dio and, uh, and whoever uh, has gone or went to Trinidad, it shows how desperate um, and in their desperation and lies, it is um, full, total foolishness. I, I mean, they say things that in two seconds, or a couple minutes, you can get the facts about the matter. But they just say they just say these things. Now, so, so the general secretary is not just Captain Kirk, he is able to impress and influence, um, as they suggest, the CCJ, like they have suggested, he has been able to influence all the diplomatic community, the Secretary General of Commonwealth and, and, and CARICOM uh, chair and everybody else. If you are in government de facto and all of these things the opposition can do and we have the power to do, you also are saying that you're just useless. Because if you, if you are responsible for the COVID task force, if you are responsible for the uh, civil aviation, 
uh, and everything that happens. And we are able out of government at the moment uh, to exercise all these powers. Then you could imagine um, what they're saying. Last week, if you recall, uh, uh, they attempted to suggest that um, we have some grand scheme uh, for some coup and to kidnap David Grange and all, all kinds of foolishness. I mean, who, uh, <laughs> who comes up with these things that is so silly that even though it's serious, you have to laugh at it. And that, that is what um, is happening. And I suppose in the next uh, 72 hours, uh, we are likely to see more um, madness uh, being said because they are, they are confident like we are that a declaration will be made, a declaration has to be made, and that declaration can only be made um, that Irfan Ali has been elected the president of, of the Cooperative Republic. They are as confident as we are. And that is the reason why uh, they are getting so desperate. Eddie, I think you're on mute. Yeah. Sonia, um, I'll bring you in here to get your comment. <laughs> I suspect you didn't sign up for this kind of craziness, huh? <laughs> I, I, I don't think any, any Guyanese, any of the international uh, community, any of the international organization, I think it's, it's quite unfortunate because we are being laughed at at such a level. It's, it's amazing. But what I wanted to say, I mean, this reminds me of someone who has been under anesthesia and is coming out of anesthesia and they're just <laughs> delirious. They speak whatever, uh, absolutely random things, things are that, that, that are not in touch with reality. So um, uh, you're right, as we go down, as we get down to the declaration, this is going to get crazier. But I don't think that Guyanese are surprised at the level of propaganda that is coming out of the mouths of these persons in the AP and UAFC camp. Uh, what surprises me, though, is that a man who is an attorney and has been the head of the Ministry of Presidency, comes out and makes these statements that are completely untrue and are on the, on he, I mean, he's lost all of his marbles to be saying all, all of these things. They are quite um, far-fetched and out of touch with reality completely. Uh, the other thing is that I wanted to, to say is that, um, the, again, uh, in the words of me Motley, the truth hurts. And what they want to do is hang on to power at any cost. So as they know that the truth is far removed from what they are saying, they continue to say it because they want to hold on to power. So that's all it is. But we want to reassure Guyanese that the things that are coming out of their mouth are not true. I mean, the latest attempt that we have seen at desperation is that, yes, um, the GS for the opposition is, has been, was flown overseas in the company of Jerry Gavaya and another. And um, this is all to go and influence the CCJ. This is a Caribbean court with a high level of standard that will not take influence from anyone. And yet this is what is spew being spewed by the APNU. It could only be that they are delirious and they know that the end is coming soon. I Importantly to Eddie is that the world is so technologically advanced that people run multi-billion dollar businesses, don't even have to travel. It is done via, the tech, via technologies like we are using tonight to communicate. And so people are able to influence people all around the world, governments are able to negotiate, to make contact, uh, to influence um, other people. And nobody jumps on a plane to travel and go someplace to influence somebody because of the technological advances uh, 
that we have. And, and so it is, it, is, it is lunacy. It is not propaganda anymore, you know, that you have to go on a plane to influence someone if you want to influence them. Secondly, why would we want to influence the CCJ? We uh, sent our lawyers there to have a conversation with the CCJ and present our um, case before them. And for us, that is where um, if, quote unquote, the influencing of the court do happen in the courtroom, not outside of the courtroom. And, you know, it's, it's like people who, who, are, who have larceny in the art, they normally accuse other people because apparently they are aware how they operate and how they function. And they, are, they think that everybody functions that way. Why would we want to issue, uh, to go and influence? The other important issue for viewers is that the matter before the CCJ in large measure has nothing to do with the declaration of the results. Has nothing to do with what the results are. Everyone is aware what the results of the March 2nd uh, 2020 elections, what it is. The People's Progressive Party garnered 233,000 votes, and Green Genesis Cabal garnered 217,000 um, odd, odd votes. And therefore, according to the Constitution, the person who got the most votes is deemed to be president. So, why we have to influence the, 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 the um, or, or attempt to? As I understand it, and, and Sonia would know more than I do, being an attorney, that the CCJ is to deal with, with, with a matter that was before uh, the, the, the Court of Appeal that spoke to trying to insert a word into the Constitution and whether they have jurisdiction to review uh, the matter that went before the CC, uh, before the Court of Appeal and the decision they made. made. The relief that uh, Eslin David asked for uh, trying to prohibit the CEO and the chairperson and GCOM from making a declaration, those relief, they were not granted by the Court of Appeal. So the thing is that the, the CCJ um, decision on Wednesday, whilst it is important to settle, as I understand it from the lawyers, to settle uh, legal matters that might be in confusion and contradiction today, it has no bearing in large measure on the declaration of the results. And that declaration will come. It has to come. But Joe, the, the thing is, you know, um, when you look at all this madness and, and, and this propaganda that they're attempting, uh, my concern is when I, when I look at what they wrote, um, it is also a serious matter because they're trying to tarnish the character, the reputation of these judges like they did with everybody else. They did a whole program today attacking Ralph Gonzalez because of a Leah, the, 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 the Leah confusion that they have there, you know? So their, their agenda somehow, I don't know what they intend to achieve by doing this, but their intention is to tarnish the character and, and, and or assassinate the character and, 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 you know, smear people's reputation as they go along. And this clearly shows a desperate cabal and also show or, or, or speaks to that saying that, that, that saying that we know when a cow goes to the slaughterhouse, what happens? And this is exactly where they are because as much as it's funny, it's something laughable, you have to look at the fact that they're trying to say that we're attempting to influence the judges and somehow give the impression as though these judges are not people of good standing that they can be influenced. We have to look at it that way. Um, I don't know what they're trying to achieve, but, but we have to look at it from that perspective. Zonia? 
Yes, well, we, we have seen from quite a while ago with the no confidence motion and so on that they have absolutely no regard for the rule of law. They have disrespect coming out from every corner of that camp as it relates to anything that does not, uh, that does not conform to their views. So once you have, as a matter of fact, the entire, and it's really a disservice to their supporters because they're, they're speaking to really a very small fraction of what Guyana is. And they, they seem to forget that they will have elections in another five years or whenever the president um, is sworn in from that day on, they will have another five years, another election. And they're really doing a disservice to themselves because they are selling a storyline that is completely out of touch with reality and saying to these people that everybody of good standing and of a high level of performance uh, and quality uh, that they amount to nothing. So, doing all of this, uh, Eddie, uh, is that we know that serious people don't take them seriously. <laughs> that, that, that is important in everything that is happening here. That is serious portion. people don't take them seriously. <laughs> in the case of the, 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 the Caribbean political leadership and business class, professional class, what they see Granger as now, not as a president anymore, they see him as a sanctimonious gangster. So they don't take him seriously. Um, the, the other day, um, Ralph Gunn Lazal's um, coined a phrase for th these people, uh, talking about assorted ja jaundiced um, view or, or, or something like that. Assorted jaundiced sources. Right. <laughs> so, so, so the point I'm making is that you would note, and, and Sonia just mentioned, um, uh, me and Motley give them a swipe and a swat by saying the truth hurts and moved on. So it is, it is where we're at now, no person of substance, whether in the Caribbean or further field or in Guyana, is debating with the cabal because they don't take them seriously. Uh, I am told this afternoon um, Ramjatan was on the was on some program and he is suggesting that the diplomatic community is silent because uh, they recognize that the elections at fraud. And they, they, in the international community is silent because they will not speak to you anymore or about you because they recognize you are useless. Ramjatan and Granger and the Cabal, what they will do with you is act if you uh, impede the democratic um, uh, process in this country. They stop talking to you. And so you saying this, they, they, they're silent, they're acting, they have started to act. So they don't have to speak to you anymore, they have spoken to you enough. And everyone that speaks now they don't speak about an election they don't speak about voting they don't speak about a recount happening they speak about a declaration must be done based on the recount uh, results that, that is where we're at so um i'm told also i had a couple yesterday or something Imagine Hamilton Green comes out to speak about rig, rig elections. I mean, how you can, you, this cannot be more likable. Imagine Hamilton Green has come out in 2020. Speak about rig elections. Guyana. Well, but, but Joanna, there is nobody left, you know. There is nobody left to say anything that makes any sense. So they're pulling out whoever else they have in their heart. Uh, but to attack to attack the judges of this caliber that represents the region. This is not this is not a Guyana they're representing alone. They're representing the region. And to get to that level and then you're attacking them, absolutely nobody with intelligence or even, even with a shred of intelligence will take them seriously. So. 
not only taking them seriously, um, that, is, that is one of the issues, but I think what they are doing, and I, I hold this belief firmly for a very long time now, I think what they are basically doing is that they're setting the stage, Joe, with the hope that when the CCJ rules, they can blame somebody else for their failure. Um, so they start the conversation about who's talking to the judges, who intends to do this with the judges, and, and who will bribe the judges, and, and who will influence the judges, because they know that they will fail. They know that, and you mentioned it earlier, that GCOM can only declare one thing, and that is to declare the 460,000 plus valid votes cast and declare the PPPC the winner of the elections. So all these, these different narratives, all these accusations and claims that they are making is because they hope, they're hoping somehow it will be enough to bring people out on the streets, maybe um, to have a repeat of what they did in 1997. Um, but I believe that Guyanese are smart enough because I was looking at the, the same letter that the same document that they posted about uh, Javio and Govai and so on meeting with um, travel to Trinidad and their supporters are asking them, but the airport is closed. How did they get out? Why would they go when they could have made a call? So the people who they're trying to influence are not stupid. This is not a Guyana of the 1970s and the 1980s that we read about many of us and that Joe, you live through and you know about. People are smart and people know that they're lying and that they're desperate. So I think all of this somehow is to try to set the stage to, for, for when she uh, make the declaration and declares the PVP the winner, that they can create some problems um, in the streets. That is my view. That is what I think. Eddie, you mentioned 97. 97 is 23 years away. We are in 2020. That's the first point. The second point is that, as you just mentioned, the Guyanese people are not stupid. Large majority of the supporters of APNU AFC, they know that their party lost the elections. The other important issue I always speak to is you have thousands of people who in 1997, they didn't have a home. They didn't have property. Through the initiatives of the People's Progressive Party, CIVI, today they have ownership of homes. They have ownership of cars and other, uh, and, and other property. And therefore, I am confident that whatever stage they are set, they are setting, will not be successful, cannot be successful. Because I always make the argument, when a man has a house, it is difficult for him to be influenced to go and burn Sonia house because he know he has a house. When a person has, they have a car, it is difficult to vandalize my car because they know they have a car also. And so ownership uh, that people have been able to acquire things over the period of governance of the People's Progressive Party civic. That is one of the things that is responsible primarily for the APNO AFC being unable to mobilize uh, large amounts of people for mischief. And we have seen it over the period, beginning with no confidence motion, right up to this period, right up to the last week or whenever they tried to mobilize people. Added to that, People have their own difficulties they are, they are faced with. Their own economic difficulties and financial difficulties brought on by the same government that they voted for in 2015. Many of them are unable to pay their mortgages. Many of them, are, they have already had their, their, their vehicles uh, repossessed. Some of them are, are behind uh, 
time in their mortgage and banks have been patient. They have threatened foreclosure. Many persons um, now, the fact that their children are at home, it is more expensive to manage the, that because the children are, are at home. Many persons, they have no jobs because the places they work at, they have scaled back or they have closed down their businesses. So people have their own difficulties and this government has not been helpful as regards dealing with uh, social security nets for the people in this COVID-19 period. And therefore I'm confident that whatever they seek to plan or whatever they're attempting to do cannot be successful, will not be successful. The Guyanese people want to move on. They want to go ahead with taking care of their businesses and their children and their economic development. And they want this country to move forward and to progress so that they can be successful uh, in, in the programs and plans that we have outlined uh, during our campaign. Sonia, um... you know, you know, Eddie, this is why I said earlier that they're only speaking to a very small fraction of persons, because as they open their mouths on a daily basis, the level of indecency and dishonesty keeps increasing and they're losing ground with their supporters as we go along. So even, so just a very small fraction of maybe the diehard supporters they still have. And those persons probably, it's either that they feel that they, they have deluded themselves enough to think that uh, these persons are believing them. But it's a matter of, it really is a matter of the majority of Guyanese realizing that these people are not leadership quality. These persons cannot run this country. And they are for themselves sifting out what is right, what is wrong, what is accurate in terms of the information that they're receiving. And they're using their own logic to realize that everything that comes out of the mouth of the APNU members um, and the AFC members are delusional. Well, I'm told so also, Eddie, that Ramjatan again continues to spew this, this uh, banality of during the campaign, how we had ads tailored for different communities. Uh, we would hope that the fact that we have reported these comments of Ramjatan for action by the Ethnic Relations Commission, we will hope that the, ex the Ethnic Relations Commission deals with this matter expeditiously like they have dealt with so many other matters of persons uh, making comments that are insightful and that are racist in content. We would hope that Ramjatan will not be treated as a sacred cow by the Eth Ethnic Relations Commission. And the Ethnic Relations Commission will all Ramjatan before it the same way that they have done many other Guyanese because he still continue to, to, to speak about the, the PPP. Have, uh, we had put out there ads that are tailored specifically according to him, to Indian uh, brothers and sisters. And some of the comments he has made suggest that the ads were saying that how Indian is only Indian can uh, manage the oil money and black people can manage oil money and all that kind of thing. I, yesterday in a, on a program, and I'm doing it tonight again, I challenge Mr. Ramjatan or any one of the cabal, bring before the Guyanese people any one of these ads that you talk <laughs> And that, that, I mean, prove, prove us wrong. We made that challenge the very first time we spoke about this, Joe, and we said, bring it. Bring yes, it. Let, let him. Let him let him and, and, and for, for the persons who we continue to spew that nonsense to, they must ask him also. I to suspect produce this ad that is Isaac talking about. 
Joe, I so know it cannot produce any such ad because they don't exist. All the ads that the People's Progressive Party Civic produced and made available to the Guyanese people during the campaign, they're public ads. We had no specific ads tailored to anyone. We spoke to the Guyanese people about our programs and our plans that we have for them once elected. And so the ethnic relations, I am calling them out tonight, the ethnic relations commission we have seen acting 24 hours, 48 hours after people would have reported persons making comments on social media and they have called them in to discuss and to rebuke them. We have written the Ethnic Relations Commission and we hope that we don't have to write the Ethnic Relations Commission again, asking them to investigate and to deal with this matter that Mr. Ramjatan continued to speak about. And I'm told Nagamutu was on some program also. But the, the deviousness in this conversation, uh, Eddie, is this. If you note the two persons who are speaking specifically about this matter, it is only Ramjatan and Nagamutu. Because the intention is for, because they are Indians, they're likely to be more believable. And that is the, the, the deceit and the deviousness of, of, this, of this continued conversation. And we have debunked it, and we would continue to debunk it, debunk it. And we are calling on the Ethnic Relations Commission to expedite this matter with Mr. Ramjatan, the same way they have done with other lesser mortals as, as, as we see it. Ramjatan must not be placed before the Guyanese people by the Ethnic Relations Commission as an untouchable or as a sacred cow. And we hope that members of the Ethnic Relations Commission, uh, they are listening to this program tonight and they can recognize how we feel about this matter and they can deal with it very shortly. But, but Joe, apart from the Ethnic Relations Commission, uh, before you go, Sonia, I would also want to join you to call on the Guyana National Broadcasting Authority because Ramchitan made these comments today on the radio station in Linden. They would have written to TV stations and radio stations um, for simple things like uh, maybe calling um, Granger a dictator or, or, or a charlatan. And a charlatan. But Ramchitan is out there trying to sow the score trying to pit one ethnic group against the other. Keep repeating this divisive rhetoric over and over and over. So I would also want to join to call on the GNBA. They have been very active when it comes to certain radio stations. They have been very active against the PVP. That's what I'm saying. And against anti-Granger um, persons. But I want to see if they are silent on this as well. But I believe, you know, the problem with Ramjatan is that he spends a lot of time at the rum shops. And he tends to pick up everything that people say, the, the, the drinking bandits that they have there, you know, we talk all sorts of things, and he run with them. And, and that is his problem. The problem is when he run with these things, what he do, what, he, what, what exactly it leads to is really, it tends to lead to division among our people. So that is the problem with him, Tonya. Yes, Eddie. Well, I think Joe and yourself would have covered it quite well uh, in relation to calling out the ERC and the GNBA. Now, the GNBA must act impartially. It must not act partially as, it, as we have seen that it's been acting recently, and not so recently, as a matter of fact, for quite some time now. It's been uh, making issues with the PPPC. But it must act impartially as it comes to this, because and I will say this, from a legal point of view, this seems to be hate speech that is intended to incite racism. And at no point in time should this be any such comment by anyone. And Mr. Ramjitan is by no means excluded from this, uh, from this category. At no point, no material time 
should racism enter into the arena. We should, we should not be creating a divided, uh, a divided population at no point in time. We do not stand for that and we will never stand for that. So the ERC, is, it's necessary that the ERC takes action as, as uh, Joe said earlier, expeditiously as they have been doing recently. And um, the GNBA needs to act impartially and call this out. But um, you see, Sonia, the thing is, this is when, and, and this again is the desperation of this cabal. When they realize that everything that they try, they try to rig the election several times, they fail. They try, and so, so their only hope now is to try to divide our people, divide the people of this country along racial lines. And that, and it seems as though Ramjutan and Nagamutu have now gotten themselves weaved into the fabric of the PNC. Yes. They have gotten themselves weaved into that fabric of spreading race hate, of, of, of pitting Indo-Guyanese against Afro-Guyanese, of attacking every ethnicity. They have gotten right. themselves and, into that. And it's no less a hate speech coming from an Indian within the APNU AFC. It is no less of what of what it is. That is what the nature of it is, and it will and it doesn't change because it is said by Nagamutu or it is said by Ramjutan. And as a matter of fact, they are just putting they're just digging a deeper hole for themselves, as far as I see. But I I, I want to address one more issue that I, I I see before because I want us to spend a few minutes at least to talk about the future. I think that is where we need to look at a, as a people. We need to look to the future. And we need to, to, to spend less time focusing on the, the garbage that comes out of Congress place uh, on a daily basis and the attacks. But I want to address an issue which they seem to be trying to sow confusion in the minds of people with regards to what Lowenfield did. Um, in my view, what Lowenfield did was criminal. He committed a criminal act. Right. And that's all I see. Low and feel, and you will know more than, than I do, Sonia, um, has absolutely no power to disenfranchise even a single person, let alone 115,000 people. They're using Article 177. I'm going to hand that straight over to you so that you can explain Low and Feel's role, his responsibilities, and where his powers, if there are any, um, derived from in the Constitution. Well, what the constitution, what, art, what Article One Seventy Seven says, and that is what they are running on, is that the commission shall act upon the advice of the CEO. But then, as I have, I would have said this before, and I'm saying it again. Now, what does the word advice mean in that sense? Advice does not mean that you are going to uh, have a perverse report based on your own opinions uh, upon matters that are rightfully supposed to be in an elections petition and of which you have absolutely no authority to act upon and you put that into a report, it, the, the report becomes perverse and you put it before the commission and says, well, here, you must act upon my advice. Advice in that sense does not mean that anything perverse that comes before the commission, the commission must act upon. Lowenfield, in his own words in 2015, uh, would have said, and as a matter of fact, not 2015, it was in 2018 or 2019, sorry, 2019, he himself uh, admitted that he, and explained it in detail, that he was subordinate, is subordinate to the commission and that he is subject to the direction and control of the commission. If you now, so desire, Sonia, I can, I can run the video if you so desire. Yes, we have the video, but we also have section 18 of the Elections Law Amendment Act of 2000, which states, and allow me to just quickly read this, the chief elections officer and the commissioner of the registration shall, it does not say me, shall, notwithstanding anything in any written law, be subject to the direction and control of the commission. He wants to go back and use the paramountcy of the constitution to say that article 177 says that they must accept anything I put before them as my advice. Advice cannot mean something that is perverse. It cannot mean that. And it does not, it, it, it is not intended to mean that. 
parliament did not intend that when they had the constitution enacted. So advice, advice, and it can be illegality and perversion. I mean, I mean, it's as simple as that. Any and 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 what so uh, the 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 Barbados PM said it rightly. She said, and she's a senior counsel. She says, by what executive fiat this CEO think he can dispose of one vote, much less one hundred and fifteen thousand votes, and that, that is it. Uh, she's in Barbados and she understands clearly. And you have Mr. Ramjatan, apparently either drunk or half drunk this afternoon, seeking to suggest that the, the chairperson must, uh, and, and the commission must accept uh, whatever law and field, um, whatever law and field brings before them. And it shows the, the, the nonsense in it because Vincent Alexander was clear several times he, over the period. He has been mentioning about the commission rejecting a report coming to them by the chief elections officer before uh, Lowenfield was appointed chief elections officer. So they're very much aware and they, 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 they know, and Ramjatan must know, he knows that the fact that he is arguing that 177 can be utilized the way Lowenfield thinks he can. Um, and you know what is important? If Lowenfield believes and he thinks he did not do anything wrong, why he didn't show up at the courthouse? <laughs> I mean, if you, if you were of the view that I did nothing illegal, I did nothing wrong. You would be the first person waiting for the magistrate to arrive with your lawyers. But if instead of that, he has been hiding and running and sleeping at different residents so as not to receive um, the documents from the marshal. And if now we hope that the police can find him because the court the, ma the magistrate has now ordered that he, he, he be served. So a man who is confident that he has not committed an illegality would not be hiding and ducking and running. But Ramjatan is hoping, as he said some time ago, that he believes somehow, some way, they can retain power via a technicality. <laughs> power ain't got technicality, power is the ballot box. The, the man said today he's optimistic Granger is going to be sworn in shortly. It is, it is the votes of the citizens that will determine who gets power and who don't get power. And the old world recognizes that. Most of Guyana recognizes that, even supporters of the APNU AFC. I saw one goodly gentleman who um, always spoke glowingly of David Granger and how decent and a good man he is. One GHK lal today, pleading and begging his soulmate, David Granger, to conceive, to bring this to an end. Uh, you know, I saw um, the, the other one, Eddie, you would know him more than I do, living overseas, always used to be on Facebook cussing out the PVP. Uh, I saw him um, conceding. Um, I, 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 so, so, so the point is, some of the most radical and rabid anti-PVP types, they have reached the stage whereby they recognize that this got to come to an end. You have to bring it to an end, and the faster you bring it to an end, it is better for us. And for us, Eddie, as, as, as uh, whilst we are doing programs that say transition, the APNO AFC, they're still doing programs about the recount. They're still at the convention center. We are talking now about getting into government and being able to execute the programs 
and plans that we um, put before the Guyanese people at, at, the, at the election uh, campaign, at the campaign for the March 2nd, uh, 2020 election. You know, Eddie, I just wanted to go back and in relation to Lowenfield's report being perverse and illegal. Now, it stands to reason that the chairwoman would have on the 16th of June, she would have issued uh, 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 her decision and reasons why GCOM could not uh, pronounce upon the validity of the elections. And that is because Article 163 of the Constitution gives exclusive powers to the High Court to deal with the specific issues upon which Lowenfield is seeking to, uh, to justify his report. Now, if the chairwoman is saying that GCOM does not have the power to do that, Lowenfield being a statutory officer of GCOM by extension does not have the power to carry out an investigation. It's, he's not a trial body to carry out a trial as it relates to the validity of the elections. So therefore, he cannot do what he did unilaterally so as to put a perverse uh, or put his own opinion into, into a report, making it perverse at the same time, deducting and increasing numbers in favor of the incumbent, which on the common law fraud, that captures what he has done. And that is where the illegality comes. So by, by, all, by saying all of that, the commission therefore does not have to act upon what he considers to be his advice. I'm muted here again. I keep muting. Um, I'm not, not, um, but Joe, you touched briefly there on um, us moving forward because I think, you know, I think Guyanese have come to the realization that all you're hearing from the cabal through propaganda lies, um, attempts to sow seeds of discord, attempts to, 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 to divert attention from what Low and Field was doing and all sorts of things. But like you said, Joe, Guyanese want to move forward. Guyanese want to get their lives back together so that they can, you know, look at the future. Um, so the faster this comes to an end, it is better not, not just for the PDP, but for all Guyanese, regardless of who you voted for. Because at the end of the day, the People's Progressive Party Civic has prepared a plan, a program, with every single Guyanese in mind, the PPPC has promised 50,000 jobs within the next five years. And the faster we get to, be, to, to work, we can start working on creating those opportunities for the people of this country. Unemployment in this country has been skyrocketing over the last five years. The PPP has promised to create um, house lots thousands of house lots, tens of thousands of house lots for Guyanese, and the faster the party gets into office, Dr. Ethan Ali is warning, we can begin the process of creating those house lots and not to give 10, 15, 20, 200 acres to cronies like what Harmon and the others are doing until now, but to rather give those lands to the poor people of this country so that they, the dream of owning a home can become a reality. Importantly, Eddie, is that before the elections, uh, as viewers would know, when we put forward our programs and our plans for the Guyanese people, COVID-19 was not with us. Uh, today, COVID-19 is with us. Uh, and therefore, one of the urgent matters that we have to address in government is how we respond effectively to this pandemic because this cabal has not been doing a good job. They have been caught up so much in attempting to rig elections that both the chairperson, Nagamutu, and the CEO, Harman, they have failed the Guyanese people in this regard. Because whilst 
you have all the CARICOM nations. They have flattened the curve and they have had a decline of infection. Guyana, we are increasing daily our infection rate. And it must suggest that this cabal is not doing what should be done like to be successful like has happened in the other countries. Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, the smaller um, islands, many of them today, they have no one infected with the COVID-19 virus. Uh, Barbados, to help them in their uh, health program, they brought in a hundred doctors from Cuba to help them. And that uh, contributed to them flattening the curve rapidly. When they, when they did lockdown, they put in place social assistance measures to help uh, the people whilst they are not able to work or to, to go out as much as they uh, can they normally were accustomed to. And that we have to, of course, we have a task force uh, at the level of the party, but that is something that is new upon us that we will have to uh, execute and that would have to become part of our program when we get into government. Because uh, if you're following what is happening uh, in many parts of, of the country, there is a rapid increase of, um, of infection. And you have in the last um, two weeks or thereabout, we have had three or four more persons die uh, from COVID-19 and that elderly people, young people, the, 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 the teacher from Letem is less than 30 years old, I think 26. 25. Uh, the guy 25. from uh, Bartica is 36 years old. The guy oh. from, uh, I think Alba Istang who died a uh, couple of weeks is 42. So the last two weeks, four persons have died and the infection rate has skyrocketed rapidly. I think if we follow, we are now, I think 254, 254 persons um, infected. Just a month ago, we were at, at least half of that, I think. So in one month, the infection rate in Guyana has increased by at least 100%. And the death rate has increased at least by one third um, over, over the period. In the same period, as I said, when all of our Caribbean brothers and sisters, they have had a decline of infection and many of them that had infection, no deaths occurred from people who were infected. And that is something we have to um, deal with urgently uh, once uh, and when we get into government um, very shortly. Sonia. Eddie, uh, it's an understatement to say that Guyanese have not been, uh, they have been traumatized. It's an understatement to say that they've been traumatized and drained from everything that's been happening from the day of elections to now. And they've been hit and we've been hit with a double whammy in terms of the elections lasting this long and what we've gone through in terms of the election and the COVID-19. Then recently we would have found out that there is no money left in the reserve and that the, 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 the country is in heavy debt. So that does not help the situation. Guyanese is seeing the bigger picture as to what the future would be like on that dictatorship. And all they want is to have their lives comfortable and they want to prosperous lives to themselves and their children. Now, our manifesto has shown the country that otherwise we wouldn't have gotten the more, more we wouldn't have gotten more votes. No, they, they, this is, and our manifesto was created 
to help each and every Guyanese prosper. That is what at the end of the day they want. Now the country is handicapped as we have seen because we do not have a government. We do not have a legitimate government. We no longer have a caretaker government. And we are severely handicapped and Guyanese are realizing that if we go down the road of, of, of having the incumbents stay there in power, we are going to suffer even more because we're not going to have the relations that we have in terms of uh, the economic trades we, are, we, don't, we will not be able to access the oil money that, that can help us as we need help right now. And they are very well aware of that. So the faster that we get Dr. Fanali sworn in and we have a democratically appointed government, the, more, the, the faster that we can move towards having every Guyanese be able to live a comfortable life and put the country in a position with which it was before and to move forward. So I um, I do believe that G -com, the chairwoman of the commission is very well aware of what the country will suffer should we go down a road of um, of a perverse path rather. So I, I do believe that GCOM at the end of the day, the chairwoman will do the right thing because we need a de democratically appointed government in order to have the future that we have been um, that we have been wanting for so long. Sonia and Joe, I want to thank both of you for joining me this evening. Um, unfortunately, our time has expired um, and we have to, to bring an end to our discussions here this evening. But Joe, I want, to, I want to close using your very words that all of this can only end one way. Um, and that is democracy winning at the end of, of, of all the madness that is going on with the APNU AFC and the PBPC being declared the winner officially. Um, I think everybody already know that the PBP won the elections. Um, it's just for formally GCOM to do its part in terms of the declaration and that Dr. Irvin Ali can be sworn in and um, appoint his cabinet and begin working for the people of Guyana so that their lives can be improved um, in the coming months and years ahead. So again, Joe, Sonia, I want to thank both of you uh, for joining thank you, me this evening. And to our viewers, we want to say thanks for being part of this program. Uh, we're going to be back here tomorrow uh, to keep you updated as to what is happening in our country. With All right, thank you and good night. All right, so again, thank you. Good night. Good night.